All righty, I have a construction update for you guys today. So obviously Guardian opened the other day. Um, its bin system is installed and fully functioning, um, which is really cool. Its new transfer track is installed right there. So if you look, the control panels for the transfer track are right there. The track then slides off to the left and then the train moves forward onto a really small track segment that's installed behind a wall. Um, it can fit only one train at a time by the looks of it. Uh, so this was installed to make way for 2025 prep. Um, so the new coaster is most likely going to take up a place where they would lower the trains um, during, in the coaster uh, for Wonder Mountain's Guardian. So they had to design this whole new section. So the tra transfer track section is just right in behind that wall. Um, but I thought that was really cool. So really excited to see because uh, the amount of work that's gone into prepping the land for the 2025 project is insane. But I must say, like, seeing no footing start um, for this coaster for 2025 is cr pretty crazy to me. Um, I can confirm there is work inside the mound that we can't see that has taken place. Um, and if you're a Patreon and you've seen me inside the park, you know that to be true. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. Again, things are going to heat up very shortly. We are just waiting on Moosehorn. Moosehorn Falls is literally holding us up. Um, but yeah, so they've started removing the locker, uh, the old locker building, not room. Uh, Guardian's open. They've started tree removal just across from Guardian. And there's markings that are underneath Guardian heading back towards Alpen. Um, I'm going to show you guys an updated footing map at the end of this video, as well as where they've done soil samples and going into detail of those. Here is a little staging area for the 2025 project slash Moosehorn. Um, the same company is doing both. So they've been using this as a staging area. Um, on top of that, uh, again, the water park opens in, I think, about two weeks now. And Moosehorn Falls is nowhere close to being finished. Again, Wonderland has delayed it themselves on their website to June. But if you look here, this is uh, yesterday. I went and flew quickly um, just to get uh, an idea of Moosehorn Falls for you guys. And then a brand new massive shipment of rebar cages as they're about to dig the pool, as you can see right there. Um, so the caisson company is done the caissons. Um, so it all comes down to who's going to do the pool uh, for Moosehorn. I can't see it being the caisson company because they really need to get started on this 2025 project. Um, and if they're doing the pool too, that's going to set them aside a whole other two weeks. And uh, man, this is just crazy. Considering I have up to 167 um, support columns marked for this coaster. Not all 167, but I have up to number 167 support columns marked. It's quite crazy that we haven't seen them start the caissons for this coaster. Uh, but I'll go into detail in just a second about my thoughts on that. So here's that massive rebar shipment that came in today, or yesterday, sorry, for Moosehorn Falls. I assume it's for Moosehorn. I don't think we've received the actual rebar um, for 2025, but I know that we have um, threaded rod on site. So in my video yesterday, you heard me talk about how we're able to use threaded rod in order to rule out manufacturers. And I wanted to show you guys a couple of, of examples. So I'll use Mach and B&M as some really clear examples. So B&M uses like plates and a really thin spacer, um, like almost non-existent for their threaded rod cages. That is common across all of their coasters. It's a patent design that B&M uses. Um, so that's one way we're able to row at B&M. Mach uses rebar instead of threaded rod for their uh, threaded rod cages for the uh, support columns to concrete. Um, so that is how we're able to rule out Mach. And Vacoma, um, on most of their coasters, uses a very square design with very minimist, uh, minimalist uh, spacers as well. So that's how we're most able to rule out Vacoma. Again, uh, Vacoma could end up using one of their other models designs. So we're not able to fully rule out Vacoma, but it's looking very unlikely that it's a Vacoma. Now, Premier, Zemperl, and Intamin use very similar designs in terms of spacers and cages. So that's where it's become very difficult. If you look at Premier, 
They got the round circular um, cages with the slightly chunkier spacer. Intamin has the chunkiest spacer, but Zamperla has come in with some pretty chunky spacers as well. So uh, we, we do have it down to those three manufacturers, um, and I'll go in a little more detail in a second. Um, the orange circles you are seeing on the screen before you are soil samples. So you have your littler soil samples along the path of the coaster there in the small orange circles. Um, but an interesting fact is uh, we have the large orange circle in Extreme Skyflyer's plot of land. So when we were watching them do the soil samples over the last couple of days, uh, we noticed that they were doing just minimalist soil samples along the path of the coaster. But then when they got to Extreme Skyflyer, they took multiple samples and extremely deep samples. So that is telling us that Extreme Skyflyer's plot of land most likely, again, we can't fully confirm, we are making assumptions based off of what we are seeing before us, that this is going to be some sort of really tall element on Extreme Skyflyer's plot of land that requires some really deep foundations. So that's our prediction that Extreme Skyflyer will house a really tall element with some really deep um, caissons. So when it comes down to predicting the manufacturer of the coaster with the evidence that we have before us and the footing map and the threaded rod and spacers and all that jazz, the numbers, the column numbers and letters, um, it brings us down to Zamperla, Intamin, and Premier. Um, Zamperla and Intamin share a 40-40 chance um, for uh, being the manufacturer because we don't know much about Zamperla's design yet. Zamperla doesn't have uh, some new custom LSM layout that they've fully designed from scratch. And they are an Intamin dupe with X Intamin design team um, and no pre-existing custom layout lightning models. So it could be the manufacturer as much um, as Intamin could, even with the Intamin evidence, it could go either way. Um, especially with them redesigning Top Thrill 2, uh, we see some very similar designs. Although with the spacers, we did get to see a bit of Zamperla's design. Um, and the, the comforting news was what we saw on the uh, Top Thrill 2 support column for the spike didn't exactly match um, what we are seeing over at Wonderland. Um, now, with that being said, that is a really tall element, and that could be why as well. Now, when it comes down to Intamin... Um, the evidence was leaning towards Intamin patents that we have found online, Intamin, more specifically Intamin spacers. The column markings were a complete match um, with Intamin, Premier, and Vacoma, um, but we have mostly ruled out Vacoma, so it brings it down to Intamin and Premier. Um, although we have seen some sort of evidence that Premier markings on the support columns don't actually match what we're seeing on the ground currently as well. So that's been a little comforting as well but again premier is still a very likely candidate um, there are strong rumblings of cedar fair buying a few intimate lsm models the the footing layout currently suggests the newer intimate track design as well now when it comes down to premier premier has um, a slightly different spacer design than one what we've seen so far um, or have heard of our 2025 project again take everything i say with a grain of salt um, and it doesn't currently match Premier, but the threaded rod cages do. So that's where it's gotten really confusing for us to decipher um, Intamin versus Premier is it could go either way. Both manufacturers have significant similarities of what we're seeing, but both have slight differences um, to what we're seeing um, on site. So uh, it's it, it is very confusing to be super transparent. Um, but a very reliable American source of mine did bring to my attention four weeks ago, if you remember my video that I made about four weeks ago, I think, um, of the idea of Cedar Fair working with Premier on our 2025 coaster due to some last minute changes. Now, if this source does end up being correct, um, one, that's a really good source to have, but two, um, that's crazy because it confirms a, a few other things that we have been hearing about the project. Um, but the only thing is there is counter evidence to what I have heard about the premier rumor. So that's why I haven't fully believed it myself, but I'm keeping it on the table because it did come from a pretty reliable source. Um, the footing layout does not currently align with this though. So the threaded rod does, but the footing layout that we're seeing currently laid out, again, we are missing a lot of footings. Um, being marked on the ground, which I'll show you in a sec, the current footing map that I have created. 
Um, it just doesn't work. It doesn't align with Premiere, but um, who knows? Premiere could be working on a new model altogether, which could be throwing us off as well. Again, any of these manufacturers technically could be working on a new model that Wonderland was after, but from our current understanding, um, they are going down the LSM launch path. Um, so I, again, based off of the evidence that we have before us and any of my Patreons that have seen me in the park, um, can vouch that I do have significant evidence to go off of um, in terms of why we're predicting one of these three manufacturers to be our 2025 manufacturer. Um, but again, once I find very concrete evidence, which should be soon, I will update you guys. Even if it means I was wrong, um, you will know uh, the manufacturer when I know. And uh, I am excited. Even if I'm wrong, I'm super excited to present it to you guys. And I promise you that we'll know in the next two to three weeks. Um, with that being said, um, let's present the footing map. So as you can see, we have up to 167 marked. You can see a, a, a pretty concrete path of this coaster. Um, it looks like it'll either start in the Alpen area or inside the mountain. Um, and it'll launch out the top of the mountain or out Tunnel 1, whatever it decides to do. Uh, it'll head on over to Extreme Sky Flyer's plot of land. And then it'll head back, do either a turn around uh, International Show Place, and then head along the side of the mountain over Vortex's Drop and Lift Hill back towards Thunder Run's old station. That's what we currently have marked out for us. That's a lot of information I'm placing out there. Um, and again, I do want to stress that there is evidence that there'll be some sort of element that comes out the top of the mountain and some sort of really big element at front gate. So um, we're extreme sky flyers at. So that's all I have for you guys right now. Again, I update this the minute I get information. And um, the reason I haven't put this anywhere is it's been a bit before we got column 167. Um, so there wasn't any uh, information to update on it. But when I do get information updated, I'll keep making videos. Uh, the videos are going to start to get a lot more um, you know, out there. Uh, construction is going to start any day now, uh, like full on construction. And you guys know I'll be there to report on it. Anyways, thanks so much. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this info packed video and have a good one. Bye.